Hey friends, Valerie Ling here. Uh, is it about flattery? That's the title of this lie. Today I've been thinking through my head that my dance card is very, very full. Very, very full. This is a live where I'm actually going to talk about, uh, you know, m missing out on opportunities and making sense of your motivations for why you're taking on those opportunities and really working through uh, making sure that you're saying yes to the things that matter and no to the things that flatter. Oh, I like that. Did you see what I did with that? Matter, flatter. I have to remember that. So uh, this morning I woke up and um, was pleasantly surprised to have had an invitation to, let's say, a ball. This is a metaphor, by the way, All right? To a ball where you go, ooh, I've never been invited to such a thing before. And it was a particular media engagement to go and speak um, and engage on a platform that I've never been uh, to before. I watch period pieces, so, you know, I love Pride and Prejudice, Bridgerton, you know, those sorts of things, and this doesn't happen anymore, but in those sorts of period dramas, you know that if you were to go to a ball, um, eligible, uh, it's usually women, young women, have a dance card and people fill up their dance card because they want to be in the queue to basically have a dance with them and it's I guess it's quite flattering if your dance card is full and that um, you've had uh, lots of suitors perhaps uh, invite you on the dance floor and, and then there are going to be some whose dance cards aren't full and they're you know probably standing hoping that someone will ask them and, and it's really a space of um Beyond popularity, uh, it's being desirable, right? It's very flattering, is it not? When you're being pursued and you're being asked. Now, I don't have a parallel experience of dancers. I grew up in an era when we had school discos and, um, I mean, you'd pretty much just be in a group huddled and bobbing up and down. Um, sometimes you might be asked for a slow dance, but there were no dance cards. None of this really existed. But, you know, when you watch these period dramas, it's kind of like, oh, is your dance card full or not? Well, recently it's been filling up or feeling like my dance card has been very, very full. Come unexpectedly, really, from um, a podcast that I put out and uh, been media inquiries and, and media conversations about, you know, wanting to maybe I, um, just find out a little bit more about what I've uh, discovered or you know, what the podcast is all about or whatever, whatever, whatever. And mainly being saying yes, because the kind of um, interest, if you like, at this point in time for a topic that I've been talking about for a very long time, you know, like when you've been talking about this for a long time, like for about a decade, and there were times when I would actually be told, who wants to talk about burnout, Valerie? It's such like a downer. Can you like put a positive spin to it? And I'd be like, well, no, I can't. Uh, you know, those days when nobody wanted to ask you out for a dance really because, you know, it was repugnant, like, you know, to talk about this. We didn't want to dance with you. It's like... Well, now, fast forward, everybody's talking about burnout. New research has been conducted about burnout. Very granular, industry-specific conversations are happening. And so I guess given that uh, I spent a lot of time thinking, researching, reading about it, um, there are different conversations happening about it. So let's just say that my dance card is very, very full because, you know, it's almost the end of the year and... Uh, before I was saying yes, because just about everything, you know, kind of when you ask yourself the question of, is this a critical area to talk about? Is this within, you know, our uh, our lane, our zone? Is it is this what we do? If it's anything to do with burnout or workplace well-being, the answer is going to be yes. This is what we do. Um, the whole uh, motto, if you like tagline of our movement, our organization is a world without burnout. So the dance card got very full because if you would ask me to come and talk to you or have a dance with you around the issue of burnout, it's within our zone, it's in our lane of focus, the answer is going to be yes. But lots of people want to have these conversations and so the dance card is very, very full. And today's invitation came really on the top of, it was just unexpected, just I hadn't, um, 
even known that it was going to be issued. And I'd already made the decision to say that I cannot, I cannot do another one. Uh, quite aside from the, the cost, right? It might seem like it's um, happy days to come out and do public things and media things, but really the cost is really high because are people gonna disagree with you? Are people gonna just take task with you? Are you going to have to answer things that you don't wanna answer? Uh, there's no backup plan, you know, some interviews air without you ever hearing it before it goes to air. Some have prep, some don't have prep, some you're doing it on the spot, like literally turning up, being asked questions and go, and then it's it's life. So uh, it's it can be pretty costly. So I decided that, you know, <laughs> the dance partners, if you like, that I had said yes to were fairly safe bets. And I'd been able to talk about things like, will it be recorded? Will it not be recorded? Um, what is your audience? Uh, when will it go live? And, you know, fairly safe. Uh, and, and the things maybe that I had considered to be a little bit uh, less safe for me, I might have said no, or I might have delayed it to next year or whatever, whatever, whatever. So I woke up this morning kind of going, oh, I don't know if I want to take this. And then I thought about this, you know, my dance guard is really, really full and I'm contemplating putting this one in because why? It's flattery. It's flattery. It's mission. It's it's important to the mission. Yes. But really, it's very, very flattering to get another invitation. And guess what? This goes to like a sense of your identity and your sense of your purpose and a sense of what are you actually really putting around your neck as an, uh, a kind of a measure. You know, we already know social media gets you uh, positioned to be produced and popular and polished. And this is why I tend to just jump on looking the way that I do. I don't want to buy into that, right? Um, social media has a particular purpose. It has a particular place for us. We are being who we are and engaging uh, through, through a social lens. And so, it's like really asking the question of, is this really the lane, the sort of currency, the sort of motivation that I want to swim in this lane? Um, and so I decided to pause. <laughs> I didn't say yes straight away and really took some time, went out this morning. I know this sounds like, Valerie, really, do you have to think about everything to the nth degree? Um but, you know, I also have young adults in my home. My children are watching, right? So I also feel like I do want to weigh up how I do things because they will see and, and, and they will pick up on these things. So I took the morning and, and just went, is this flattery? Are you responding? Do you want to press? Yes, I'll do it. Yes, I'll do it. Because it's so flattery. Have you actually gone through your series of questions? Is this value aligned? Are you the only person who can do this uh, engagement? What are your well-being levels like? What are your connections and your family connections like? If you take this on, what will you need to shift? You know, really working through and finally coming down to, I guess, a core motivation and identity question. And why are you responding to this? Why would you make space and make, a, you know, a, a, a point of doing this? So, it was an interesting exercise to go through and I, I finally had a conversation with someone because my husband who watched me this morning kind of going through my process said, listen, <clears throat> this is probably something um, you've been asked to do something that's different from what you normally would do. Is there anybody you know that you can just run through your thinking about the, uh, to take this on before you say yes? And I was like, I did think of one person actually, but he also thought of one person and reached out and you know we had this great conversation and finally just asked why do you think I would do this like what is it? and we had this amazing conversation the two of us about going well why would you take this you know when uh, why would you accept this beyond flattery uh, why would you take this step in this direction uh, with the costs associated with it you know ensuring the sort of the safety of you know, making sure that it's not too costly and really drilling down to what can we land on that is not just it's in line with my mission, in line with my values, 
but really that this is something that can progress a conversation that I have already started um, um, having. So that was really useful. And by the end of it, <clears throat> have been able to clarify that, yeah, you know, just because it's flattering, just because it, what did I say? Just because it flatters doesn't really mean that it matters. And really, when you're trying to manage exhaustion and knowing that burnout does come one part from a fused identity with who you are and what you do, being clear about what you say yes to and what you say no to. I hope that made sense and um, would love to hear what you think. Just because it flatters doesn't matter. Love to hear your thoughts.